join our sport, ladies. Yes, we're um, super friendly. Uh, we will help you. Don't be afraid like I was when I first started. <laughs> Hey, Ninja Babes, what's up? I'm Kara Mack. Welcome to the Ninja Babes podcast. I'm here with Rachel D. Guts. What's up, Rachel? Thanks for ha- joining us. It's so good to have Hi. you. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi. So I'm so excited to have you on today, Rachel, because I've known you for a while. We're both here in the Jersey area, uh, and it's been great to get to know you as a fellow ninja and as a lot of people know, we train together, we see each other in the community. And so I know you, I know how much work and effort you put into this season for AMW 13. And as so many people saw in semifinals, you crushed it. You did amazing. And so I'm excited to just talk about um, how the AMW 13 season's been going for you, but also looking back to the season of NNL that just ended. We'll talk about that and kind of talk about our thoughts for NNL coming up in season seven. Um, but let's just dive in. So Rachel, where are you from? And just tell everybody a little bit more about yourself. So I'm from New Jersey. I'm, well, I'll be 23 in like a week or so. Um, I'm going into my first year teaching. I just graduated with my master's in education from Rutgers. And I've been training for Ninja for about three years now. Yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations on graduating also. Thank you. Big accomplishment. Uh, So, yeah, you've been involved with Ninja for three years are you did, were you able to test on A and W all of those seasons leading up to this season? So I tested in Baltimore in 2019, and that was the only time I tested. And I applied that year, okay. um, but I didn't get casted. But I just feel like it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I don't think I would have been ready, um, feeling like as confident in my ninja skills um, to do as well on the course as I like did like my rookie year now and I also feel like I knew what to expect what it was going to be like up on like that bigger platform up on those bigger obstacles um so I think that was really helpful in having a season of testing going into it absolutely yeah and and even before ninja your background is in gymnastics right yeah so I grew up doing gymnastics I never did it like crazy competitively. I was on like a trampoline team for a little while, but I didn't really compete. And then in high school, I switched over and I did field hockey and track for my high school. And I did pole vault and hurdles. And then when I was going into college, I made the decision not to do sports in college, which I kind of regretted, but I did like club teams for a little bit, but it didn't really click. And then I found ninja and that clicked yeah it's all good I mean I did it's, it's funny because I in college I decided not to do sports either and I had in high school I had done volleyball and track like those were my two seasons and mm-hmm. uh when I went to college I was kind of like I need to focus on what I'm learning and I just felt like traveling with the team and all that I, I honestly didn't know if I could handle school and doing sports um and so I kind of did the same thing like did some intramural different sports like when I felt like I could and whatever um but then I always thought like what if I had kept doing college sports like would that have helped ninja so much more but we're both where we are now and it's like gotta just move forward with wherever you're at so I feel like you're still in a great place and yeah just, I kind of felt the, the same here. way um where I was like, oh, I got to focus on my career and stuff, but it just felt like something so big was missing. And I actually really wanted to get into Ninja for like a whole year before I did. I, my freshman year of college, a friend took me to VertiQuest, which was really close by Rutgers. And I guess I didn't, I didn't get completely um, addicted yet from it, but I always like knew about the gym And then it wasn't until like a year and a half later where I was like, all right, I'm going to sign up for a class um, and like start doing Ninja. I'd like been following everyone on Instagram and actually listening to the Ninja Babes podcast a lot. Um, I had studied abroad the semester before in spring 2018. And I remember like lying on the beach, like listening to the Ninja Babes podcast and hearing one time that you were at VertiQuest. So I was like, oh my gosh, the Ninja Babes girl. And then I remember when I started going, um, I was like, 
after I got back from studying abroad, I was like, I need to start going to the gym. And I like forced myself to take a class and everyone was so nice and friendly. And then I remember you showed up at VertiQuest and I was like, oh my God, it's a ninja babe girl. I was like totally starstruck. Um, but it was so amazing. But then everyone was super friendly. And I was like, why was I nervous to start doing ninja? <laughs> I mean, it can be intimidating when you don't know anything and you're just like walking into a gym. But I do remember that first day that I met you at VertiQuest and I remember you telling me that you listened to the podcast and I was like, oh my gosh, really? You listen to my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now it's so, come like so full circle now that I'm on the podcast. Like yeah. if I told myself this like three years ago, I would have been like, like so like impressed with my future self and stuff. You should be impressed with your future self. <laughs> Oh, so cool. But yeah, I mean, you've become such like an integral part of the ninja community, I feel like. And I don't just say that just because like you're here and you're on the show. Like, I mean, I really mean it. Like, I feel like you're someone who I've looked up to for training and just like your determination and endurance and like just your like, all right, we're going to do this like mentality. I, I look up to that so much. So I really appreciate having you on. Thank you. You're welcome. So, all right. So let's keep talking. So for a and W, when you got cast this season, was how did it feel? Like, what was that experience? Uh, it felt so, just so cool. And I guess, like, kind of a little relieving and just so amazing to finally get the call. Because it was my third year applying. Um, I applied for season 11, didn't get a call, applied for 12. And I never got any call. Like, I didn't get the original call or anything like that. And then for season 13, I was like, all right, I need to, like, change up my submission video do something different and I asked a lot of people for advice and beforehand I kind of just like sat in front of the, my computer and like just talked to the camera um but for 13 I had a friend like sit down with me and interview me and like it was just kind of like more natural conversation so I was able to actually show my personality because the whole time like I knew like I have a pretty like outgoing personality but um, that would be good for the show, but I didn't really show that in my submission video. So I knew like this time for 13, like I actually showed that personality. It was like a much better representation of my real self. So I was feeling like a little more confident that I would get a call, but like um, I still like didn't want to like have too high of expectations. Um, and then they did the thing where they asked uh, my boyfriend ahead of time to record me getting the call. Um, so he knew. And like, when I was like upset about not getting the call, like he had to keep it a secret. Um, but then when I finally did get the call, I was just so excited and I felt really ready. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a creative way to go about doing the casting video too, though. I think that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, nice job. Yeah. When, uh, when you did get the call, were you like screaming? Like, <laughs> So. Yeah, I was so excited. At first, I was kind of like, in a little bit of like disbelief because I was actually in um, Florida visiting my sister. So like she was the one that ended up recording me. But like two days before, like we were laying on the beach and like I was like having my phone on like loud and stuff because like I knew everyone was getting calls. And she like called me as a prank and I like freaked out and I got so mad at her. So then when I actually got the call... I like thought she was pranking me again, but then I saw she was recording me and I like knew that was something they did for rookie sometimes. So I was like, Oh, this is legit. Oh man. What a moment. It's just like so much. It's like the butterflies and like, uh, it's just, yeah. That moment yeah. And it was like something I dreamed of like for so long getting that call. And then I finally did. And it's just like, Oh my gosh, it's like actually happening. Yeah. Awesome. So then as you prepared for AW13, I know, so like looking at our regular seasons with NNL and stuff like that, I already knew you were like a strong competitor, but for you, I know you probably knew that yourself, you are a strong competitor, but coming into AW13, did you do anything special to kind of like get your mind in a good place to not feel nervous about like being on TV or anything like that? Um, yeah, so I did, I want to say like half of what I did to prepare was like all mental um, I mean, I was in the gym, like running a and W style courses, but also at home, I was like sitting, visualizing myself, like getting ready to run the course, warming up. I knew because I had tested, I knew kind of like what it looked like 
backstage and how like you have to walk up to this on the stairs before you go up on the start platform. So I like visualized all that every day. And I think that really helped me a lot because when I stood there on the stairs about to go up, it felt familiar to me. Um, and I also, um, when I was practicing in the gym and I was like, before my course runs, I like, I closed my eyes, pictured like what it would be like and feel like I would be like pretending that I was on the start platform, having whoever I was training with, like, I'd be like, pretend you're the producer, like telling me to go. And most of the time I was training with people who've done it before. So like, they like knew what to expect. Sometimes, um, you know, we would have like fun with it, like pretend like I'm getting iced and stuff. Um, or like an obstacle was broken, they had to fix it. But um, yeah, so I just did a lot of like visualization and writing down my goals every day um, of what I wanted to accomplish. And that really helped um, feeling prepared and confident. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And I think you, you nailed it on the head when you said the word like feeling familiar, because I think I know for me too, that's made a huge difference of when I can visualize and prepare and practice and do all that stuff. But then when you get to the point when you actually do it and it does have that feeling of familiarity, it's not like the first time or it doesn't feel for, so foreign. Even if it is the first time, it's like, I, I've thought about this so much that it feels natural. It feels like something I'm yeah. confident in doing. So that's really cool. And it definitely paid off. <laughs> um, <laughs> Coming into qualifying, what was your expectation or like your goal that you wanted for yourself in qualifying? Um, I expected to clear the course. Like I wrote down every single day, like, um, like I cleared the, something like that. Like I had a goal that I wrote down every single day. Um, and I feel like doing that repetitively a lot rather than just like once or once in a while, it really like ingrained it in my mind because I knew I was capable of clearing the course um, and um, I just like expected a positive outcome. So yeah, so I expected to hit a buzzer, but I also focused a lot on like the process and like, um, like taking things one obstacle at a time, focusing on what's in front of me and how to do it. Um, I kind of pictured when I would visualize, I like knew like, I like used like previous obstacles in my mind to picture it. Um, and I also like sometimes like pictured um, not making up the wall the first time or like not feeling confident and like pushing through that, um, which I think definitely helped me. Um, like cause for semis, I got the wall in three tries, but I was not like, uh, like nervous at all. Like I just remember like, feeling very like, before my after my second try I was like okay higher first step and like I just expected to get it and I think that makes all the difference um yeah it's like you weren't flustered you just took the feedback of what was happening and like applied it and in that moment yeah yeah that's really cool that's awesome so so then that was kind of my next question is going from qualifying to semifinals uh was there anything that you kind of like learned in qualifying that you're like all right in semifinals like got to think about this or like anything that you learned from qualifying that helped you out in semifinals? Um, yeah. So one big thing that I like took away from, uh, qualifiers is that like, I got, I got pumped out on the course and, um, qualifiers. And I saw that a lot of other people like got pumped out in the same spot as me. Um, so like, that's something I like worked on is like visualizing myself, like pushing through that pump. Um, and like focusing on like what I needed to do to make it to the obstacle rather than like, don't fall. Cause like, I literally thought that right before I fell and I'm like, why did I think that? You know? Um, I, I feel like I'm like thinking of my own brain of that moment of, it is weird how sometimes you have that thought of like, Oh, I'm going to fall right here. And then you do. And it, I'm not someone who tries to be, or doesn't try to like, you know, I feel like you don't try to be negative, but like, I'm usually not someone who just, thinks negatively about my performance, but I have had those moments, not necessarily in semifinals, but in other courses where like stuff is challenging and I'm getting through it. But then like, I'd almost like don't expect to fall, but I have that thought in my head, like, Oh, this is where I'm falling. And then it happens. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, yeah. Just um, yeah, it's weird. 
But uh, where was I going with this question? Um, moving on to semifinals then. Uh, there's a couple of weeks in between. A lot, some people, I mean, if you're not a ninja, some people don't know that there's actually like quite a bit of, there's some time in between, but then it's also like, it's all been filmed already. So now with uh, both of us qualified for Vegas and I've had so many people asking me like, when are you leaving to go film Vegas? And I'm like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was working at a day camp over the summer and a lot of the kids, like, they think I, like, do it that night and stuff. I'm like, no, yeah. it was already filmed. <laughs> and they're, like, yep. in shock. Like, no way. Yep, funny. I literally had a kid the next morning after semifinals aired on Monday night, on Tuesday morning at a ninja class. A kid was like, how did you get back already? W- weren't you on the, like, in California? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, but that was, like, in April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh so what did you, when you were in semifinals and competing and going through the, the motions, like, did you feel like you basically had the same kind of like mindset prep and like strategizing as how you prepared for qualifying? Like, was there any other extra like strategizing that you did for semifinals? Um, I think one of the biggest differences is that it was a little less novel to me. So for Tacoma, like it literally felt like I was in a dream. Like it felt very surreal. And then for LA, it felt a little bit more like a normal competition. Um, it wasn't just like as surreal um, because I guess I had done it before and I had done it before recently. I guess for semis, I knew I had to make it really far in the course to move on um, because I also like knew who I was competing against and a lot of the yeah. people um, from our night or from our area and I know a lot of people are really strong and capable of uh, making it really far if not clear in the course so mm-hmm. I my goal is always to be in like for Tacoma I wanted to be in the top 30 well I wanted to hit a buzzer and I knew that would get me in the top 30 uh, most likely so like my goal was to be in the top 30 my goal for semis was to be in the top 15 um well my goal was to clear the course yeah. um and then so after I fell on the ninth obstacle they were like oh you're you're moving on and I'm or you're likely moving on I'm like oh I hope I don't know everyone's so good and I think having that expectation that all my competitors are really good and competing against lots of like really strong ninjas and really strong women like it pushes me to like I have to like be my best self, which I I love like having that strong competition. And then for semis, there was also the the split decision at the ninth obstacle. And I kind of looking back, like think I could have put a little more thought into like which one I would choose. Cause before in Tacoma, I knew like right away, which one I would choose. And in semis, I was like, Oh, I'll kind of like see how I feel. Um, And I felt like I like, gritted out the eighth obstacle a lot I had to put a lot of like physical and mental energy into it and I wasn't I didn't feel confident in doing that with the inverter obstacle so I kind of just was like whatever I'll go for the tuning forks um and it was set up a little differently when they first showed us the course so I kind of had to like figure it out right then and there and plan out my moves and then before I knew it um, I was like being yelled at to go and I think I could have um, came into it with a little more confidence. Um, but looking back, I'm like, oh, maybe I should have picked the other one. And I'm like, I'm totally falling for the split decision thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what they want. They want you to second guess yourself. Uh, no, but I, I think you still had an amazing run. And who knows, like you, you could look back now and say like, oh, I should have done the other one. But in that moment, you made that choice for a reason. You know, you made that choice because you felt gassed and taxed and all that. So it is what it is. You had a you had a great run and you're so close to that platform. Like yeah. seeing it now in the replay so many times, I'm like, oh man, there's that foot. If it just got a little bit on top and not on the front side, but you know, you did a great run. Yeah. Um, and I also think like looking back, like I could have been like just more confident about my like upper body strength I think like um like knowing I don't know just like I know like there is still something on the back of my head like these like 
like I have like a bias about like I don't know the ninth obstacle like knowing that like only a few women have gone past it I think that bias was still in my mind but like I don't think it needed to be there and I think it's gone um so I think that deterred me a little bit from it but I kind of almost wish like there was no balance option and I don't think I would have that would have been in the back of my head yeah I know what you mean but now you've gotten there and you've proven to yourself that you can get there and that yeah. bias like loses its like value in that sense because like yeah. you already got there and you could do it. Like yeah. you can get up that tower. <laughs> so cool. Um, so yeah, I wanted to uh, just kind of revel in this. <laughs> Jersey girls. Jersey Woo. girls. Oof. Yeah, I wish Abby could pop in for this like moment right now, but yeah. Jersey Girls was so fun. It was really cool to share that experience with you and Abby Clark. And yeah, a lot of people were like, how did that story come about? But I mean, it just kind of organically happened. I mean, the thing that was cool was in semifinals, we were in each other's sidelines and like we're there to cheer each other on. And um, people who know Ninja know like that's Ninja. Like <laughs> you train with your friends, like the people that you're in your community with and just cheer each other on and like help each other work through stuff and that's just exactly what it was so I just it was so much fun yeah yeah uh, I, I had a lot of fun with it and I feel like it was also like a very real story um like we do train together like I train at Chatham so much with like Abby and Joe and and you are able to come and like we all just support each other but like we have fun with it and I just feel like everything that was in the story was just like us. And I feel like they, they um, represented me very well. Like they kept calling me the energetic rookie. And like, that was just so me. Yes, definitely. And uh, yeah, going down to Point Pleasant was a lot of fun too. Yeah. And just like playing those games and <laughs> cartwheels. I love, I like the clips they used too. It was a lot of fun. Cause we were there for like a couple hours. Yeah. Um, and I was like telling everyone, I was like, we filmed that whole day for like that, like little clip yeah. of the story. Um, yep. But it was so they fun. Did. And also like I grew up going to Jenkinson's boardwalk. So it was just so, yeah. it was just so cool. And now every time like I'll go back there, like I was there like a month ago and I was like, just like kind of like reliving the fun we had. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Same. And uh, ice cream and all. They didn't show our ice cream part, but it's all good. Yeah. They, they bought us ice cream at the end. And it was a good way to wrap up the day. Yeah, it was very cute. But yeah, fun times. Uh, so now Vegas. Congrats to us. Made it to Vegas. Woo! <laughs> and Casey Rothschild, way to be. Three ladies who made it on. Uh, so obviously, like, Vegas was filmed already. Like, you and I know how it went. Um, but what, just kind of looking back uh, between semifinals and Vegas, I know for me, I was like freaking out for days. Like, I can't believe I made it to Vegas. Like, I can believe it, but it's like so surreal. Uh, it's crazy. Um, how was that intermediate period between semifinals and Vegas for you? Um, I was really grateful that I made it to Vegas. Um, I was <laughs> like really excited about the backpacks. Um, oh, if you don't same. know, they... Um, they usually give out backpacks for the people who make it to Vegas. And I didn't, I didn't know yet if they were going to give us backpacks. I don't think we found out until we got there, but right. I was like, so excited. That was like the first thing um, when I was like in the hotel in LA and I realized I made it to Vegas. I was like running around the lobby. I was like, I got a backpack. Um, Cause I guess I, feel I just, the exact same way. I literally kept talking about the backpacks. Like, for yeah that whole month in between i was so excited yeah because it's something you like see other ninjas walking around with and you're like i want to get that one day and i don't know i just like every time i like looked over at my backpack like afterwards i like looked over and i just like i felt a sense of pride um in myself of like my accomplishment um but then also just like training for vegas um I kind of shifted my focus into like running like a course like quickly because there's a time limit Mm -hmm. and like working on that um, like conditioning and endurance aspect of running a course and like picturing like the bigger obstacles like everyone was telling me like how big everything is. Yeah no well said 
it, it is true. Like the Vegas obstacles do feel so much bigger and a lot of them are like super high. The pools that you could fall in are like a lot deeper. <laughs> um, so it, it is like a strange thing. Um, that's the only place I've ever been that has obstacles like of that size. Um, yeah. So Vegas and I, does feel really different. I also was practicing um, like obstacles that like I knew were going to be in um, stage one and a little bit of stage two, like the the spider jump is that what it's called <laughs> and yes. um and like the warped wall where like you have to start like uh the curved warped wall um and I practice like doing all those like moving fast because that's something that I think has always challenged me is like moving quickly through courses um so it was like a good a good thing that I needed to practice and I was like really grateful that like I had something that pushed me to practice doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to throw in real quick that at the end of the episode, we're going to have some bonus content. And part of that is Rachel's going to show us a little bit of her warm up and favorite stretch for ninja ninja-ness. Um, so if you'd like to see some of this bonus content that's coming up at the end, it'll include a few other things as well. But uh, if you are a Patreon subscriber, it means that, you not only get cool stuff like bonus content, uh, free merchandise, stickers, and all these things, but you also are supporting the Ninja Babes podcast. So you help our budget every month to be able to put out these episodes. So thank you so much to all of our Patreon subscribers. And if you would like to subscribe, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Ninja Babes. So I'm going to switch gears right now. I don't know if you heard that sound. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> Um, uh, this is the first time I've used any of these cool sounds, so I'm just going to be a nerd about it for a second. Did you know that I can actually do this? <laughs> All right, so next, moving on to uh, talking about NNL for a second. So this past season, NNL 6, um, you competed quite a bit throughout the whole season, and so I'm just wondering, kind of looking back over the season, did you have a goal or anything for the NNL and then we'll talk about worlds in a second, but just kind of mm -hmm. looking at the whole season, how did you feel about competing? I felt like I grew a lot in the season. Um, before it started, we had to like make the choice whether to compete in elite or adult. And I actually didn't know which one I should choose at first. Um, but essentially I thought about like what I want and I wanted to compete with the best to push myself to become my best self. I knew maybe like I wouldn't be winning all the time, but that's not my goal. My goal is to be my best self. And so that essentially pushed me to choose elite. And then I did elite and won my first comp. And I was like, I'm so glad I chose elite. I don't think choosing adult would have been as appropriate. Um, but actually my goal kind of for the season before was to become like a competitive ninja and to be like on podiums and stuff. And then to like, if towards the beginning of that, of season six, I realized that I had achieved that goal and I kind of shifted my goal to um, just like be, be more focused on myself um, and just become my, to perform as well as I can basically. Um, and I was actually like reviewing, I have a notebook that I write down like before and after comps a lot in and before this podcast, I was reviewing my notebook um, and trying to, kind of also like doing that to prepare for the next season and something I noticed a lot I wrote the word confidence a lot um I either like didn't complete an obstacle because I lacked the confidence or I completed an obstacle because I felt confident so I think looking ahead I'm gonna like focus my goal on being confident um and I think that also focuses a lot on the process of completing obstacles um, I like to be more like process oriented than like focusing on the the process and all of like the pieces of it, the components rather than just yeah, the result. yeah, exactly. So, um, I think like focusing on like completing the obstacles confidently, like in my moves as well as like how I feel about it in in my head, um, will make a really big difference. And I think that's what I need to to just become my best self and like. I think it's better for me to like focus on doing that rather than like winning or like being fast. So like something I need to like work on is like 
I think like just like being more smooth and efficient and like that's something I can work on in practice. Um, but like when I whenever I try to think about like being fast, um, I end up like making silly mistakes. And I think that also brings the attention away from myself and more on my competition. And then that that doesn't do well for me because I need to focus on myself to complete the obstacles. But going back to um, the confidence thing one time, um, after a competition where I completed the crux move, um, another uh, female ninja asked me, like, did you know you were going to complete that obstacle? And it just, like, shocked me that, like, like this is something that, like, we think about. Like, like no, like, I wasn't, like, 100% sure I was going to complete it. But, like, you need to be confident in yourself to complete it. Um, and I think, like, working on that and, like, always, like, having the expectation that, uh, you're going to complete the obstacle is like going to be a game changer for me. And I think that will, could be a game changer for a lot of ninjas. Yeah. Well said, it, but it's true. Like focusing on your own performance and just being confident in every aspect of what you're doing will give the best result. And so then like that best result might be on a podium or might be, you know, doing really well in competitions, but no matter what, like it's going to bring about the best result for you personally. So I think that's really cool to hear. And I love that you have a journal and like a way to reflect and really process through what you're doing and like move forward with it. So Mm -hmm. that's cool. Uh, So then going into worlds, how did you feel about the course itself? And then, so like the actual obstacles, the course, the setup, but then also with the elite division, there was that 20 second um, time added on for the females. So kind of like talk to me about both of those things. How did you feel about it? Um, so I felt like I really liked the courses that we only saw one and two ahead of time, but I felt they were fair. I thought they were an appropriate challenge. Um, I thought it like flowed well. I remember um, for stage one, um, the obstacle with the slider to the barrel, I like immediately saw that and like I didn't feel good about that obstacle. Um, because like the year before the barrel, like I was taken out by that too. And I think those barrels are obstacles that are more challenging for someone who is smaller, like a lot of women. Um, and just because you have to like get your whole body around it. Um, but so like, I like immediately like thought about that obstacle as something that might take me out. And I just kept probably kind of trying to like push it away. Like, no, I got it. I got it. I can do it. Um, and then I'm not surprised that was where it took me out. So um, I've just been like kind of like reflecting on like how I can get that bias out of my head and just like be confident because, you know, it's a lot easier said than done. Um, but then uh, for stage two, I thought it was a good course. Um I hadn't really had much practice on special delivery. And after I saw that it was in the course, I like uh, found one at the gym and like practiced doing it. Um, So then I felt better about that. And something like that big ring move, like that was something that like I know a year ago me would have been intimidated by. But um, like now, like just like, having more confidence, like, and also the pressure of competition, I think is helps me a lot. Um, Like if I had that move in practice, like, I don't know if I would like just send it right away. Um, But I like having like the pressure of a competition, like you just got to send it. (laughs) Um, And that's what I did. And it worked out. But um, going back to the, the time change, I was cool with it. Um, I know that like speed, um, I always need to keep working on, but, um, so I knew that the time limit would be a challenge for me and, you know, we're here to complete obstacles. And so that's what I just want to do. Like, I just like doing ninja. I like completing obstacles. And so I was cool with the time change, um, and I thought yeah. it would, I thought it would help me like be able to clear the course and like, that's my end goal. So I was okay with it. I was actually happy about it. Yeah. Cool. If you, if they had 
a time change for other competitions this coming season, would you continue to be like, okay, good, <laughs> let me just do my best with this this time allotment? Or do you feel like you don't always want that? Um, I think I'm cool with it as long as it's like well thought out. Um, sure. Like kind of go through like the same process that they do when choosing the time limit instead of just like throwing like an arbitrary number out there. Um, yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, I know, like, women have a shorter wingspan. So, like, it might take us a long, like, a longer time to complete an obstacle. Um, and I'm kind of in the boat of, like, keep the obstacles the same. Um, like, I'm cool with, um, like, a different starting platform. Like, um, I remember one time at a comp, like, there was, like, a little dot to stand on um like those I don't know how to describe them like just like another like platform um to stand on if we wanted it like I think okay I think it's cool to like give us like the option because it helped us like get to the like it made it made getting to the obstacle not as much of a challenge um because at the end of the day like I just want to like do obstacles um challenge myself um but I also do like being able to keep up with the guys because I feel like it's like I don't know an accomplishment too because like for semis I was seventh overall um I I do think they should keep the like they had a, a rule like top three women make it through I do like agree with that rule Um, But I also, like, am proud of myself for, like, being in the top 15, too. Like, I didn't need that role. But I think it's it's good that it's there just so our sport can be more inclusive of everyone. While we're on this topic, um, I watched the woman's special from um, that they aired for A&W, and there were some changes that I was cool with and then others that I, I wasn't. <laughs> um, like, they had only two corkscrew twists instead of three. And I didn't like how it was, like, obviously, like, an easier obstacle. But, like, something that, like, I do agree with is, like, adding a footrest after the salmon ladder. Um, yeah. Because it's not, like, changing really what we're doing. It's just as, like, giving us more rest to allow us to do it yeah so then I know just last week we had a whole episode with Chris Wachewski uh, Michelle Warnke Burma myself and Mary Lee and talking all about what the NNL has changed for season seven and we really got like nitty-gritty into all the rules and we asked a lot of questions so for anyone who hasn't watched it yet I'll link to it above you can click the link if you're in YouTube or if you're watching somewhere or listening somewhere else you can click it in the description but um Were you able to read through the rule changes yet? And did you have anything else you wanted to just put out there about that? Um, I didn't, like, get into all the details of it. But I do know, like, the major rule change about, like, oh, for women, you can change it. Um, I, I don't know. I can see, like, both sides of the argument because I did track in high school. And the hurdles for us were shorter. And I never thought twice about it. I thought, okay, like... I, I didn't know. I just, it was always a thing. So I never really had to think about like, should the hurdles be taller? And like, I don't think I would have had as good of a time if I uh, was like running over the guy's hurdles, but like, I felt like I had the appropriate challenge. Like I was challenged the the same amount as the guys were challenged, which at the end of the day is what I want. Um, but that was coming from a, it was already like that it was already established and now we're thinking about this change and I don't know I on on the on the other side the argument like I like doing the same courses as the guys I if I do a course that's different and change and I complete it like I don't I don't know if that would give me the same feeling of accomplishment as if I, if there, it wasn't changed. Um, but like, I am totally cool with a different, um, 
time and maybe like some starting platforms or a closer trampoline jump um, for things that are like clearly like advantaged if you're taller. Um, I think it also comes down to good course design and like knowing like what is like best for women. <laughs> like um, one time I did a, an NNL where the warped wall was in the very beginning of the course and the course designer was surprised that like the women struggled with it. And I wasn't surprised at all. Um, so I think like, no, I, like the, having those, the course designers know these things are really important. And I think also having like more women involved in course design would be really helpful too. Um, so I know that um, Chris talked about like a guide for um, course designers. And I think having all these things on the guide um, will be most helpful. Yeah, I think you touched on some really important points. And I really do agree with like what Chris said in the episode too, but what you're saying about having more women involved with course designing, if you, if the courses are being designed by like a team of guys or whatever, that's fine. But are they really having a lot of female course testers? And are they considering like what they actually know that women can or maybe have maybe they haven't seen women do certain things maybe they should try to find some testers and really like clarify um Mm -hmm. because I, i i do know that there are competitions that happen without female course testers and i get that there's not always a lot of women just like floating around ready to test your course and a lot of those women who might be in your region might be trying to do your competition and so yeah I, I get that that's a challenge but I think that it's something we have to figure out how to address better uh, because yeah. I I do you know you know I've been one of the people pushing for let's think about what a change could be all this stuff and I think that I am also someone who kind of likes to look at it like science a little bit, right? If you have a science experiment and you want to change some variables, if you change too many variables or even just more than one variable at one time, you won't be able to tell like what change brought about which result. And so I kind of personally would prefer to, to just see like one change. So like, all right, across the board, let's put in some extra time and see what happens before we just go ahead and like set change the courses change like everything all at once I think it's then kind of hard to see like all right well what was helping and what isn't um so I think we have to see what how it goes this season and I think people need to just be willing to try it and be honest about like the results and like share their feedback Mm -hmm. Um, but I do really think that course designers need to be talking to each other like what didn't work at your competition what did work um and have more females involved with the process yeah I think also it a lot of it comes down to needing more women in Ninja. If there's more, just women in Ninja will have more testers, more people input in. And I think more people clearing courses. Like I think at Worlds, like any one of us could have cleared the course. If there had been more of us, I think we would have seen a course clear, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There are so many girls who are so close and, you know, made it to the last obstacle or second to last. And like, we're right there in that spot. Um, and so many people who are just capable of doing it maybe just fell early, but that's like always ninja, you know? Yeah. Like um, if you look at like how many guys show up to a competition compared to how many girls, like if imagine if there were that many girls at the competition, like I think we would just see, you know, see a clear um, and such. Yeah. Agree. I agree. Join our sport, ladies. Yes, we're Um, super friendly. Uh, We will help you. Don't be afraid like I was when I first started. Everyone has to start somewhere. I fell on the first obstacle of my first competition. It's fine. Everything's fine. (laughs) (laughs) It's fine. So true. Uh, What are you, what are you thinking about for this year? Because you're going to be a teacher now. You're going to be teaching. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. I actually have new teacher orientation this week and then I'm starting like um, very soon. Um, I don't know. (laughs) Are you excited to be, to teach? Like, are you nervous about balancing teaching and ninja? Like, what do you think? Yes. I'm really excited (laughs) to teach. I felt like at the end of the season, like around like June, I was like ready to like, I was like kind of burnt out from Ninja and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to teach. But I was like working at a summer camp over the summer. So like, 
I don't know. My mind has just been so occupied with that. And now that that's over, I'm like starting to think more about like my teaching career and like what I like want to do like the first week and stuff. Um, but yes, I am worried about balancing um, the the ninja and the teaching because over the spring I was fish, finishing up my degree. I was taking grad classes. So I, it wasn't like that much time so I was kind of just like doing ninja all the time and it was so awesome um but the semester before I was student teaching it was all virtual so I was like at home not commuting so I think that made it a little bit easier but my school is kind of near the gym in Lawrence so I kind of did that on purpose to make it easier and then I like I plan on like moving over there um but I know I'll make it work somehow um, I trust that I won't like completely like, I don't know, throw, I trust that I'll, I'll make it work and that, um, I know like I need exercise to, for my mental health. Um, like I'll go crazy without it. So I know I'll just, I'll figure it out and I'll make it work. Yeah. I, there's gotta be a balance, but it's, it's funny, like the way that you said it just at the end there, because, you know, Megan Johnson, she, I feel like does such an amazing job of somehow balancing her work as a med student and being a ninja. And, but she says that she's like, I need ninja because it's my sanity. Like it's my fitness and it's like my break and my time to myself. So I think as long as you can be organized and like yeah. set aside the time, you'll be able to get there. Yeah. Like also, I know there's like- so many there's so many ninjas who teach. So go call up like Alyssa Beard or somebody. Yeah. I was actually like talking to like Alyssa about it, about like, I don't know. I'm like worried about like needing time off for A and W and stuff. And she, she was just giving me advice and like making it work. Um, so I don't know. I'll see what happens. Um, I'm a little bit just like a little, I don't know. It makes me like a little sad to think like I won't be able to like travel as much for competitions but I think this is also just like growing up and becoming an adult and like having like adult responsibilities. Yeah. I mean, it, it happens <laughs> being an adult, uh, but like you figure out what you can do and what you can't like there, there are going to be things that you might have to sacrifice, but it doesn't mean you can't, you have to stop having fun or like stop doing the thing you love. You just have to figure out how to balance it in an appropriate way. Yeah. Well, we're coming to the end of our episode, so we're going to move on to the bonus content in just a second, but uh, in a moment, I'm going to ask you if you have any last words, but again, for our Patreon subscribers, you have a little chunk more of the episode to come, seeing some extra content with uh, Rachel and I, and if you'd like to become a subscriber, again, head to patreon.com forward slash ninja babes. So Rachel, any last words? Mm, trying to think. I don't know. Just like have fun, go with your gut. Um when you're competing, just like trust your training. That's what I kind of, my mindset, like when I was warming up in Tacoma, like I was just like, I just totally trust my training. Um, and it'll, it'll be fine. Like no matter what happens, like things will always be okay. (laughs) Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks everybody for listening. It's been awesome having you on, Rachel. Um, Thank you so much. It's so good talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. I've always wanted to be on the podcast. So uh, this is really exciting. And uh, be strong, be you, be a ninja babe. Yay!